Hey, what's up you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Just finishing off a laminate counter install. And the last step in the process is to install this end cap. You can find these kits pretty much in every big box store and also online. And if you want to check in the description, you'll see a link for exactly which one I'm using. The preference would be to install this prior to the counter being in place. It's gonna be much easier and you're gonna be flexible just as long as you leave uh, inch or a little bit more overhang, which is going to give you plenty of space to have the counter sit uh, correctly on your cabinets and not have some of these filler strips interfere with the cabinet. So this application, it's going to be installed. That might be your scenario. Also, you might be replacing a damaged end cap and you want to get it looking better. So you're going to remove the old one and get a new one in place. So this video is going to be ideal for those applications. Let's jump into it. So the tools you need for this install. There is glue on the back side of this end cap that needs to be activated with some form of heat. They say use an oven, you can use a heat gun, I'm going to use a just regular iron that you'd have at the home. I do want to trim the end cap so I'm just going to use a pencil to trace the excess and then scissors to cut that down to just a, a much smaller like 1 16th inch which then I will file down later on to get it flush with the surface and then of course just a hammer to secure some of these filler strips in. That's all you need so let's go ahead and put the filler strips in place. So now we got the filler strips. I did have this backside filler strip. The challenge here with an already installed countertop is you can't put the nails in the backside. So what I had to go with is just a friction fit against the wall. And then also I put a little wood glue between the filler strip and the backside of the countertop. Then uh, for your larger filler strip, again, if you have a one inch spacing all the way down, awesome, you get to use the stock filler strip, no problem. If not, you can uh, put a notch out, like this notch right here is made for this face of the cabinet because I do not have the right spacing and I need a flush surface on the outside. So I got that adjusted. Uh, you can use sandpaper, a chisel, possibly even a jigsaw. And then I got the uh, nails already in place. So then we can drive those home and secure the filler strip. Just remember to get your surface flush between the countertop and the filler strip to the outside because that is where the end cap is going to go into place. For this end cap, the majority of the material is going to be on extra material. It's going to be on this back side. So I want to figure out how much can I trim down on this back side to make it less of a job to file off any extra. So what I'm doing is getting the end cap in place, making sure that I have extra material on the top side. And then a pencil wasn't marking very well. So what I'm gonna do is take a Sharpie and put some marks on the clearance that I need to trim off. Okay, so let me show you what I did. So I marked the extra material that I had both on the back side with the backsplash and also on the front edge measured those both which came out to half of an inch and then knowing that this was all extra material both here on the backsplash and then also on the front edge I know that I can remove extra material from the backside and then that will shift this over and give me less material that I need to file off to get a nice flush finish with the counter surface. So I marked not a half an inch because I don't I don't want to go too short. I marked three eighths of an inch on the backside, drew a straight line, and then that's what I'm gonna trim off. With the end cap properly sized, now it's time to get it adhered in place. Using the iron, I'll start in the center section. It's a little hard to see here because everything's sped up so much, but I'm spending about 10 seconds in each area to properly heat the glue. And for your reference, the iron is set on cotton. 
You also want to have a rag, a damp rag, to cool down the glue and also to apply pressure along the entire end cap. Then you can check, make sure everything is adhered properly. If there is any loose parts, just get the iron back out, heat those up, cool them down with pressure, and you should be good to go. about 15 minutes and I'm not going to bore you guys watching me struggle through all this with a file but one question you might have is like how do you know because uh, that you're getting close to the counter surface because you don't want to damage it right because you're going fairly aggressive to remove the majority of the material but then you get down to the sand part and what I found is the glue on the back side will be a good indicator. Once the glue starts folding over right on the surface, you know you're getting close. So when you get to that area, what you wanna do is make sure your angle is less aggressive. If you have a fine file opposed to a medium file, this is where you would use that. But once that glue folds over, and you can see all the glues removed, then you have your flush surface. My God, that took a little bit of time to hand file, but the finished product I'm super happy with. And overall, if you're gonna do this more than once, a cheap router with a flush cut bit is, is gonna be worth, uh, worth the investment. If you wanna know what file is good for this, go down in the comments and you'll see a link and it's going to have two sides. I'll have the medium side that will remove quite a bit more material and then the fine side that's going to be, help you finish this up. Also, before taking off, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We have videos like this coming out on a weekly basis to help you around the house and we're going to catch you on the next one. Take care.